Guten Morgen meine Damen und Herren, it's your old buddy the Foul Quince here about to do a most unbuddy like thing, to present to you the worst top 10 we have ever done in this series. So come to me to the cesspool of bad easy listening that was the week ending December 2nd, 1974. 10 is the theme from Rush, a popular mini-series made and presented by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation back in the days when they weren't a complete parasitic waste of taxpayer money. And they had Doctor Who on. The good kind of Doctor Who. Brian May, who conducts the ABC show band here, was the go-to guy for the theme to everything back then, including the first two Mad Max themes. Number 9. Daryl Braithwaite was the lead singer of Sherbet, a wildly popular, glammy, little bit proggy pop band whose greatest sin was occasionally duff choices in the singles they released. Braithwaite was guilty of the same, only he never released a decent solo single when he was in Sherbet. Ten years later, he had learned his lesson, and his solo career became an impeccably curated series of tasteful hits. But by God, he put out some shit in the 1970s. The Moyer Sisters, good morning, it's nice to see your face, never amounted to much chart-wise, because it's pretty awful, but it did hang around the charts for ages, possibly because it was used as a theme music for Channel 7's test pattern as they switched over to Colour TV, which came in March 1975. At number 7, Silvery Moon is an example of the questionable singles released by Sherbet. It's really in no way representative of the scope and the power of the band, and as an indication of its flaccidity is that it was outcharted by their own lead singer with his unctuous version of You're My World. This making number 5, and You're My World going all the way to number 1. With the most lively song so far, the great Glen Campbell brings us his take on the old chestnut, The Bonaparte's Retreat. Lively and enthusiastically sung, this one rose to number one by the end of the month and stayed on into the new year. Marx didn't say that history repeated itself first as tragedy, then as farce. He was actually paraphrasing Hegel, who said that world historical facts repeated themselves. Facts, people. Facts. And here are some that will hopefully never repeat themselves. This week's highest debutante at number 61 in the top 100 is My Little Angel by William Shakespeare, which hit number one in February. The longest running record on the charts is Gary and Dave's Would You Ever Love Me Again in its 37th week and still at number 11 before it went down in flames and crashed off the charts by mid-January. The highest riser was G-Baby by Pete Shelley, which was up 12 spaces to number 14. And the biggest fall was Annie's song by John Denver, down 8 spots to number 29. Our American cousins, home of the brave and the land of the sockdologizing old man trap, had elected Carl Douglas's Chop Socky Anthem Kung Fu Fighting as their number one single. There were a then record 34 number one hits in the US in 1974. In the UK, the number one was Gonna Make You a Star by cheery, cheeky, chappy David Essex. Essex had five top 20 hits in Australia, hold me close getting as high as number two in a 14 week run from January to March 1976. Back here in the land where shorts and long socks was acceptable office wear, it was time to fire up the quattro because the number one album was the magnificent Susie Quattro's second album, Quattro. At number five, we have the truly dreadful You're Having My Baby by Paul Anker, one of the three worst songs we've ever featured. And next up, we have another one of them. Not that I'm in a hurry to get to that one, it's just that this song is so awful I didn't want to spend any longer than I have to with it. Suffice to say it made number two in early November, then crashed off the charts, disappearing by mid-January. 
1974, two of the biggest hits were by Nottingham-based band Paper Lace. Billy Don't Be a Hero and the even bigger The Night Chicago Died. They also had a third top 30 hit that year with the Black Eyed Boys, which peaked at 23. The two big hits sit at number 286 and 121, respectively on the list of biggest hits of the physical era in my hometown. Both records are worthless novelty pieces, The Night Chicago Died being particularly egregious. Didn't stop it spending seven weeks at number one though. The only halfway decent song on this week's chart is at number three, the current US number one, Kung Fu Fighting by Carl Douglas. A slow climber took nine weeks to reach number one, held on at the spot into the new year before it was deposed by an even slower climber in You're My World. It's a novelty record for sure, but it's a novelty record with a bass line that just don't quit. Back to Drek at number two with an awful version of Hey Paula by Ernie Sigley and Denise Drysdale. Frequently voted on lists of the worst ever Australian records, it's fully deserving of its ignoble reputation. Sigley was a jobbing TV host who was most famous for a bantering interview with John Lennon in 1964 and for being spectacularly sacked from his evening variety show by Kerry Packer, who flew from Sydney to Melbourne for the sheer pleasure of firing him face to face. Drysdale was Australia's first go-go dancer and Sigley's quiz show Barrel Girl. She's still working today hosting a mid-morning show. Sigley, however, is considered virtually unemployable on account of his having died a few months ago. And what sits at the summit of the mountain of fecal matter that formed this week's top 10? The wise monkey knows. Give it a lash, Monty. Why, it's none other than the doe-eyed lovely herself, Olivia Newton-John, with a Peter Allen song, I Honestly Love You. This was Livy's biggest solo hit in the old hometown, yes, bigger than physical, despite only spending two weeks at number one. It's a primo slice of AOR cheese, and it posters a broader question. Why is the top 40 so cheesy in the mid-70s? Firstly, it has to be said that outside the top 10 and rising this week were my favourite BG song, Mr. Natural, Brian Cadd, Backman Turner Overdrive, Golden Earring, Buck Owens, Susie Quattro, John Lennon and The Sweet. So it wasn't as if the chart was devoid of rockers or quality lively pop rockers, but like 1972, 1974 was the year of the mega album. Elton John's Caribou spent 10 weeks on top plus another three for Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Band on the Run held down for seven weeks, Susie Quattro six, and yet the champ of them all was Neil Diamond with a combined 16 weeks with three albums, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, Serenade, and the ubiquitous Hot August Night. David Bowie, Susie Quattro's first album, Pink Floyd, Rick Wakeman, and Mike Oldfield all had huge hits. So it looks like the team market had moved on to the album camp and the mums and dads had the top 10 all to themselves. And thus it was the best of times, if you were Neil Diamond or Olivia Newton-John, and the worst of times because we had to listen to Paul Anker and Paper Lace. But no matter what time it is when we meet next, we know that it'll be in the dim and mysterious alleys of the past which lay off the broad and magnificent highways that cross some strange and foreign country.